Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity one last time. And I appreciate Mr. Jarrett's comments as well, uh, defending why a commission study has been brought forward by CMHC, which is not attached to a cabinet minister. Nevertheless, if the Liberals weren't thinking about taxing home ownership, they'd stop commissioning studies on how to tax home ownership. So please stop the studies, stop putting the trial balloons out there. Our job is to defend Canadians when they tell us they don't want to see tax on their principal residence, which has been the actual Canadian norm for a long time. Uh, we don't need to dive deeper into taxing Canadians in order to pay bills that have gone through the roof under this government's uh, mandate. But I'll go back to the questions we're asking of our witnesses here today. Uh, Mr. Aurora, thank you for all you've given us here today. I uh, hope you recognize our intent is to make sure we're looking forward here uh, and, you know, avoiding what we've seen from other government agencies when they say, well, inflation is just transitory. We don't have to worry about it. Well, we do have to worry about it. But the things we're going to have to look forward here on housing include the fact that, as we pointed out, the cost of the mortgage payment, the mortgage interest payment has gone down, but the cost of the actual principal in the house has gone up significantly, including in your data. When interest rates go up, those mortgage rates are going to go up and the other part of that pendulum is not going to come down and that will lead to mayhem in the housing markets in Canada. And we're trying to make sure we're ahead of that to make sure we're spelling it out about what is the actual inflation in housing here in Canada. Can you comment on that please? What's going to happen when interest rates normalize in Canada to the housing market? We'll, we'll obviously continue to measure um, both the weight of that consumption, the the, the mortgage payment as it as it um, you know goes up with the um, with the interest. Let's say uh, it will form a, a certain percentage of that basket, and we will continue to measure it uh, over time. Um, so that's that's our role is to make sure that. Uh, you know, both in terms of relative terms of that basket and then in, in terms of that price change over time that's going to have. Um, so, you know, if interest rates go up, well, you you know, people are going to pay um, a higher uh, higher mortgage interest uh, payment and that will have a, a, a corresponding yeah. effect on the on, on the inflation rate. So I've appreciated your comments earlier about that some of these costs are landing on new homeowners and not on regular homeowners. The issue is the new homeowners and those that now can't afford new homes because of the rocketing prices of housing in Canada are going to be hugely affected by any change in interest rates going forward here. A correction is going to be on the horizon. By measuring inflation and actually putting a proper inflation, a more indicative inflation number on the table, much like they do in the United States. And United States housing has not gone up nearly as much as Canada's housing prices. And yet their, their actual inflation rate, CPI rate, is at seven. But somehow the way we're measuring it in Canada has us 4.7, so significantly lower than the US, and yet not indicative of what our shelter costs are in Canada. And we're still trying to come to grips with that. And I, I haven't heard yet how you're reconciling that. Can you provide more illumination, please? Well, I, I think uh, Ms. Ertl mentioned earlier um, that the U.S., um, in a sense, takes the equivalent of a rental cost for a particular uh, dwelling and substitutes that. Yes, that has some potentially some benefits, but it also has, you know, I think equally some, you know, uh, things to to you know to to, to take into account um, because, you know, depending upon sort of how much mortgage is, 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 is left, um, you know, that may not essentially be an exact or a good enough proxy for some households as it would for others. So, so, you know, all of these uh, methodologies are uh, come with a, a, a price. The second thing is the availability of that kind of data. Um, and so we have to be conscious that, you have to have good okay. quality okay. data. Okay. To be able to I, put think, those I think, in, I think right? I'm, let me ask one last question here, Mr. Chair. How much time do I have? Yep, you have 30 seconds. Good, thank you. The, the issue with inflation is measuring inflation properly leads to making sure that wages are actually reflective of what's being, what people are actually paying in the economy. And if what we're, we're trying to do here is to try and tamp down the expectation of inflation, we're actually not passing on what, Canadians are experiencing in the market and therefore what their representation of wages versus expenses should be in the economy. Is there any indication of that? 
you've got like five seconds. Well, look, we rely, seconds. Yeah, <laughs> we rely on uh, real experts. We have an advisory committee. We rely on, on international experts. And all the information that comes back says we have a measure that is second to none. 